Everybody and welcome. I'm Sharon Bonney, the CEO for CoAbe, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to our webinar presenters today, Margaret Bowman and Cesar Ruiz. And I had the opportunity to meet them in person just about a month and a half ago, and was so impressed with what they were doing that I personally asked them to present. So I'm going to turn this over to them now as they begin sharing their screen. They can introduce themselves and talk about the great work that they're doing. So thank you, Margaret and Cesar, for being on. Thank you. Go ahead and share. And Cesar, if you would like to introduce yourself as we get going. Absolutely. So I'm Cesar Ruiz, President and CEO of Learning Alliance Corporation. It's an honor to really work uh, with this entire grouping and association of men and women that support, support adult education. Um, over the last four years, we've been very blessed here at Learning Alliance uh, to work uh, in really trying to bridge the gap of the jobs and the careers that exist in telecommunications that really help people get into the middle class. So what you're going to learn very quickly through uh, this presentation between myself and Margaret is the fact that, you know, we do look for ways to help men and women get into those high skilled, high wage jobs. We've been doing it now for a while. And our mission statement is very true and consistent. So um, I have the honor of doing this and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Margaret, to do your intro. And you're muted, Margaret. <laughs> thank you, sorry. So uh, thank you, Cesar and Sharon. Certainly thank you for having us. We are super excited to be able to talk about um, how we have partnered together and some of the outcomes that we're very excited to share with you also. Um, we believe this is a unique partnership, um, how we work with employers, with the community, and particularly with our, our two organizations together to best serve our students and prepare them for the future for very uh, lucrative careers. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. All right. So um one of the key things that uh, we should really focus on is the fact that this is a, a great national apprenticeship week and apprenticeships may be common in Europe, but they're really starting to uh, build roots here in the United States. And as we really look forward, I believe that over the course of time, we will look at apprenticeships as not a dirty word, but more as a true pathway to help learners that are not going to go to college or that are really looking for another way to earn while they learn in order to gain 
uh, an opportunity into a career and not a job uh, to really be effective. So one thing you're going to know is that the apprenticeship pathways really does connect uh, both adult learners to high school to high wage jobs, but it also provides an upward mobility path that allows us to help someone get into the middle class, but the sustainability of ensuring that they understand that the future is bright, that it's measurable, that it's competency-based, that allows you to be self-sustaining, and that you can systematically look at where you're going to be year to year to year and knowing that you are going to be able to grow and develop from a pre-apprentice, which is someone that is unemployed or underemployed, to an apprentice, which is someone that is employed and earning while they learn. So here's the, the great opportunity. For those of you that have a trusty cell phone, it does not work from pixie dust, okay? That's the first thing. There is no magical fairy that's just making it all work. Imagine there's brave men and women that climb towers that are between 100 and 800 feet in the air. And those men and women are basically hoisting antennas up to those towers. And they're making sure that that RF receiver and another antenna hundreds of miles away are interconnecting so that your AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, that those carriers have the bandwidth or you could say the, the network in order to make our phones work. But consider the fact that that is not the only opportunity. In telecom, there is no wireless without wired. So all the way up until that tower, there is wire that gets there. So it really gives us the opportunity within telecom to support someone that is not afraid of heights, that can work in you know extreme heights, someone that maybe does have a fear of heights, that maybe needs to work from a bucket truck, or someone that loves to be you know, flat-footed on the ground working on a fiber uh, network. The outcome is that the outlook you know, is very bright for these occupations and the wage is significantly strong. As you can see, the average wage is about $29 an hour, which is $60,000 a year. That puts someone really well rooted into the middle class. And these high skill, high wage jobs have incredible upward mobility. And as of this year, 7% of every single tower technician in the nation graduated from a little company in Tampa, Florida called Learning Alliance. And I don't want you to think that we only serve Tampa, Florida, everyone. Please take in consideration that we support the entire nation, 52 different territories across the US. We fly them into Tampa, Florida, or we work within the local community with community partners in order to ensure that we can identify the men and women in your area, regardless of where it is geographically, and we align them with the careers in telecom to support the 5G network of the future. So now this is an opportunity where we're gonna go ahead and share a little bit about the background. Um, this is a very short, quick video. Please pay attention. I think you'll appreciate it. It'll give you a really good understanding. If you've never heard of what a tower technician is, allow us to educate you real briefly. Enjoy the show. I'd say 90% of people don't like heights, don't like getting on a ladder, can't get on a roof of a house. And I'm the guy raising my hand. Can I go next? The climb, man. When you get up there, you get a heavenly moment. I embrace the adventure, but with the height comes a lot more challenges because a lot can really go wrong if you're not paying attention. It's not I climb this tower, we're climbing this tower. Yeah, I gotta trust every one of these guys with my life, just like they have to do with theirs. Don't ever get comfortable. You have to be together, you know, like everyone has to be on point. One slip, one trip, that's it. That's all she wrote. If it weren't even a little bit hazardous, there wouldn't be anything fun about it. To some people we're crazy and to some people we're brave. You know, you could either go both ways. It's definitely not for everybody, but you're going, you're going to find out real quick if it is. I'm not in an office, in a cubicle, behind a computer screen. There's no way I could do that. I don't want my kids to grow up like me without a dad. I want to be their hero. I want to be the person they look up to and say, that's my dad. 
how you fall, but how do you push through the darkness and go back into life. Without all that hardship, without all that heartache, without all the misery, without all that, I wouldn't be who I am today. Being a tower climber is a great part of my life. It's brought me up in life, and I believe that you should always reach down and pick someone else up. I think what we have in common is, is the tower we, we all climb. How far is it gonna take me? I'm excited to see, I can't wait. If we don't have these towers up, there's no signal and there's no connection with each other. What I get to do is definitely beyond. I'm performing my job for the world. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. That is basically the fundamentals of what makes our phone works, those men and women that do that. And we really have to tip our hats off to them because without that, during COVID, if you really think about it, we would have no connectivity. Telehealth would have never occurred, guys. Think of the fact that the mobile banking or the ability to actually just distance learning for K through 12 during COVID, or even for those that are going to school at night from the comfort of their homes. None of that occurs without a broadband framework or infrastructure. On the wireless side, it is those tower climbers. For those at home that have a fiber backbone, it is a fiber optic wireless infrastructure. At the end of the day, telecommunications is very broad. It's very consistent. It provides great opportunities. And whether someone does not have a fear of heights, or someone wants to work in the comfort of, you know, really the ground, there's a great opportunity there. And the purpose of this conversation is to ensure that you understand that there is an apprenticeship framework that supports tower, fiber, and wireless. And it is that pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship infrastructure that will lead everyone from an at-risk youth to a dislocated worker into really uh, a path towards a career. So when you think of someone that may be in an English as a second language, or when you think of someone that may be trying to get their GED, those are the kind of men and women that we wanna serve. We wanna give them an opportunity because it may have not existed before, but it does now. So look, look at it in one of two ways. There's a pre-apprenticeship framework that basically says, we're gonna make this a short-term program. We're going to give you the necessary minimal viable product skills and certifications so that the employer can watch you go through a mini boot camp that allows you to prove to that employer that, hey, I've got the grit, the grind, and the ability to get the necessary certifications so that I can gain meaningful employment because pre-apprenticeship is not unemployment. Employment equals apprenticeships. And that's what we got to remember. Apprenticeships equals employment, and it equals earn while you learn. So when you look at the community impact of what we've been able to do is we've been able to support true diversity, equity, and inclusion. And equity is a massive piece of what we're trying to do. Look at the telecommunications industry, the obstacles that we've been able to overcome. In a, few, a matter of a few years, 9% of the total industry was African-American, 38% was being retained and the massive uh, workforce shortage, which is 20,000, which is now increasing to 100,000, uh, has not even been pressed with the fact that about 28% of our existing workforce is gonna be aging out over the next 48 months. In a short window of time, 42% of our graduates have demonstrated to be people of color, women, 84% retention at the one year mark, which is more than double, and ladies and gentlemen, whether it is a veteran, which is 71% of our population, or is a person of color, we're basically putting them in an environment from pre-apprentice to apprentice to academic diploma program that has reduced the equity gap and given them an earn while they learn vehicle that has provided a sustainability into the middle class. That's something to be proud of. And that's hoping that something that we're hoping to bring to you so that right now, as you're listening to us speak and you watch this presentation, Think of who within your community, within the people that you serve, how can we serve them through this vehicle? Here's the framework of what's in front of you. We support the national footprint. 411 employers have signed agreements to be represented. We have 1,400 telecom job openings every single month. 90% of our graduates are placed 
and 42% of them represent that minority class. These jobs are readily available in your state. Now, how can we collaborate to make sure that we can communicate and bring awareness through truly that career exploration, whether it's through video, presentations like this, or maybe in a, a free online class that is an introduction to telecom so that we can bridge the gap to the men and women in your community. We're gonna also talk a little more about the fact that we can even provide a success coach approach to you guys, where we can actually work with you to provide these presentations, to provide hardware, to give you access to a gaming piece of technology that will really provide awareness to your local community. Um, the great thing about our program is that there is no prerequisite. You can begin as a pre-apprentice and whether you have a high school diploma or not, there is no requirement, no prerequisite. The key thing is, are you willing to work? Do you wanna be in the middle class? Do you wanna support yourself and your family? Because if the answer is yes, this is the framework, this is the vehicle. So for our youth, for many of you that are dealing with an, uh, an adult youth environment, anyone between the ages of 18 and 24, I believe, we figured out a way to, to give them exposure through a gaming approach. Here's a short video that kind of shows you how someone, uh, if you have a small corner in your facility or in your building, or you have access to computers, or we can ship you a uh, TV monitor and maybe a laptop or a piece of hardware, Boy, can you imagine if we gave you access to this so that it could be a telecom, um, more of a career exploration corner where people can come in and see the video that we just demonstrated earlier and maybe a video to show them the gaming piece and give them access to this game so they can explore and learn about telecom and maybe even gain enough awareness to say, you know what, I could do that. You mean to tell me that gets me in the middle class? I want to know more. But here's a short video on that. So that is our virtual reality gaming environment. I mean, consider that uh, for anyone that is uh, really looking to get into the industry, uh, please let us know if you would like us to work with you in having uh, that uh, career exploration into telecom and uh, marketing or myself would be more than glad to provide you with those resources. Again, the goal is to create awareness. No one's gonna be able to change their life into the middle class if they're not aware. And that's part of our our mission. The next key piece is the fact that Margaret Bowman with Workforce Evolve and the great you know, leaders of the industry of telecom like T-Mobile, Ericsson, and JMA Wireless, they've donated over a million dollars year over year where they're actually providing the funding to make sure that people of color, uh, minorities, uh, have the opportunity to get into the middle class through these programs. And that is what we're demonstrating now is the fact that the next tech diversity program by T-Mobile is the industry coming together to inform you that there are programs right now readily available that will fund the tuition for these men and women to get exposure and into our industry. And Margaret, I believe it's uh, 
I'm handing it over to you, right? Yep, let me find my little controller here to get next to, there we go. So um, thank you, Cesar, for that. So uh, as Workforce Evolved is, is a nonprofit organization based also in Tampa, Florida. However, similar to LAC, we serve students from across the country. Um, we primarily have a very similar mission to LAC in that we, we really seek to lift adults and their families into the middle class um, by providing services that may be the typical barriers or even extraordinary barriers to help them um, get into the programs that Cesar is talking about. So we, we are constantly looking for opportunities as well as for partners to be able to close that gap. Um, some of the outcomes that we've had in this past year, which really was our first year, first full year, I should say, of operations, we awarded over 27 scholarships, um, which was equal to about uh, a little over 250,000 in funds. And then of those that received our funds, we had a 100% graduation rate. So what this shows you is how we work with different employers, community-based organizations, and then of course, Learning Alliance and other colleges, other adult ed providers to really help students from recruitment all the way through onboarding how we make that as seamless as possible of a transition for them through, through the entire journey. Um, so that is our primary mission. And again, very pleased to be able to serve and work alongside with LAC to do that. So what this shows you, some of the wraparound services that students at Learning Alliance receive. So every student that comes through the program, particularly in those three that Cesar mentioned, um, it is a residential program. So they are provided with housing and three meals a day for the days that they are in school. And then of course, transportation. And that's not just transportation to and from the dorm, but also if they are flying, or require some kind of other transportation from their home state or their home city, we also provide that for them. Uh, a pretty cool part of the curriculum is um, we have what's called power skills. So what is embedded in their curriculum every single day, two hours a day, uh, they are presented with the problem solving, decision making skills, emotional intelligence content, um, financial literacy, computer literacy. Um, they take personality assessments to be able to get to know themselves better and, and what are some things that they need in order to work effectively on teams and out in the environments that they're going to. So we really stress the importance of soft skills going into the environments that they are going to be spending their careers in, as well as those technical skills that they get through the program. And then, of course, the career readiness point. So... Um, as they near graduation, in fact, they start building their portfolio from day one. As, as they get closer to that graduation point, however, they will be provided with interviewing skills, mock interviews where they're actually videotaped so they can watch themselves and see how they're coming across to others, resume preparation. Um, they Part of their portfolio includes all of the documentation of the competence, competencies that they've received, the certification they've received along the way. And probably, uh, I'd say at least 80% of our students or LAC students have at least one job offer prior to graduation. And we're going to introduce you to a gentleman in just a moment that his biggest challenge now that he's gone through the program is deciding what is the best job offer to take. Because like so many of our students, he's received multiple offers. Okay, so this is the gentleman that I talked to you about. He's only been with us since September, but he has really made a name for himself at Learning Alliance. He is um, definitely somebody that has stepped up as a leader 
um, and has taken notice of the instructors as well as the employers that have come to interview him. So Mac was in September, um, unemployed, 23-year-old ex-offender, resided in a very small rural community outside of Tampa Bay. And in addition to uh, those barriers, he had other um, hurdles that he needed to, to cross over and few opportunities, or at least he thought so. So he was working with his career source counselor doing a job search and he came across Learning Alliance and uh, looked into the career a little bit, thought that it was interesting enough that he reached out to us on his own and asked about what does it take to become part of your program? This is a career that I'm interested in. So um, he expressed that interest also to his career source counselor. They contacted us, us then also. We were able to um, have Mac fill out an application for a scholarship um, while his WIO funds did cover the vast majority of the tuition there was a little bit of an unmet need and he did qualify for that through workforce evolved so mac went through the program our five-week uh, broadband digital installer program completely um, no charge to him with his room and board, his meals, all support services that we need, he needed. And just a few months later, these are a couple of images that Mac has posted on his LinkedIn profile. Um, very, very proud of the fact of where he is now and the career that lies ahead of him. And you can see um, there towards the bottom that he had multiple job offers and then finally found one that was the best fit for him and will be starting that upon graduation. And one of the things that um, Learning Alliance does also is they will have employers come onto the learning site and uh, get in front of the students, tell them about the organization, what um, is available to them if they join the organization, the benefits, what a typical day looks like. And then for those students who are interested, they will actually do one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews. So again, it's that close connection and the partnerships that are um, solidly established between Learning Alliance, um, Workforce Evolved, and then we are, you know, other institutions such as those of you that are um, on this call today. Always, always, always need more, more partners. I'll turn it back to you, Cesar. Thank you, Margaret. Really quickly in the story about Mac that I think is important is this industry is truly desperate to find people that are willing and able to make a change. So consider the fact that that is a young man that has, that is an ex-offender that had six different opportunities in front of him. And he got to give the rose to whoever he wanted to basically, uh, you know, make his employer. Uh, after investing the amount of time, he gave one employer the opportunity. And that level of commitment and communication was really valuable. I bring that up because consider that whether it's someone that is in an underserved community or someone that is an ex-offender, it may be an area that we determine for qualification, but please keep in mind that it's not something that's going to disqualify someone. In the past, if you had a seven year, you could not pass a seven year background, you couldn't be served. But in today's day and age, there's been a lot of discussion within the telecom industry that if you have a background and you served your time, do you have to spend seven more years serving a second sentence once you become a member of society. And we've received enough support from enough employers that we now feel confident that we can support that ex-offender population. So keep that in mind as you progress forward that, you know, this is more about the individual. This is an industry that does not hold anything against anyone. It's truly set up to ensure that if you have the will, and you're willing to put in the commitment that there's an industry that will support you, regardless of your sex, age, national origin. Uh, and this is another great short video that we're going to demonstrate that talks about the T-Mobile Next Tech Diversity Program. My name is Carlos Lopez. I'm from Mexico, raised in San Diego, California. I'm 24 years old and I'm here to better myself and to get a new skill. My name is Quintavin Fowler. I am 25 years old. I'm from Albany, Georgia, and I am here to prosper. Hi, my name is Julian Camacho. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I'm 21 years old, and I'm here to start a new chapter in my life. 
My name is Taylor Howery. I'm 25 years old. I'm from Minnesota, and I'm here at Learning Alliance to learn something new. My name is Rodolfo Pacheco. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I'm here to pursue a better life for my family. My name is Jesus Vargas. I'm 30 years old. I'm from Arcata, Florida, and I'm here to give my family a better future. My name is Darius Walker. I'm from Augusta, Georgia, and I'm 28 years old, and I'm here for a better opportunity. My name is Luis Morales. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Santa Valley, Arizona, and I'm chasing a new career path. Hi, my name is Roshana Luster. I'm 35 years old. I'm from Albany, Georgia, and I'm here to better my life. The Next Tech Diversity Program is paving a path for the underrepresented. By 2024, 5G networks You're muted, Cesar. Thank you. So we do get a lot of questions on specifically, you know, from the men and women that we support, who qualifies? So we built this short slide. And again, I'm going to go over it with you because I think it's really that important. Obviously, a clean driving record. It, in the perfect world, someone would be able to go through these questions without any impediments. But it doesn't mean that if they don't have a clean driving record or they don't have they cannot pass a seven year background check or they cannot pass a drug test that there's no career path for them um, instead what we do is we've identified the employers that let's say you had a DUI therefore you do not have a clean driving record they would put you in an in a job such as a um, a wireless installer where you are not a driver you're a back seat passenger of a vehicle if you can't pass a background check, then we determine from our next level of questions whether there were felonies or misdemeanors. And if they're felonies, to so determine what kind of felonies there are before we fully disqualify. Because again, the mass majority can be served. If you cannot pass a drug test, it's identifying what would be the substance. We have run into an obstacle. Uh, I will say up front that in many states where marijuana is a legal substance, uh, unfortunately, marijuana is still a class one controlled substance within the federal government. So in exchange for someone to work on a federal site, they must be able to pass a drug test. But the operative word is federal site. So if we have an employer that does not do federal work, it means that you are not required to pass that portion of the drug test. And again, these are some of the ways that we can navigate the waters to ensure that these men and women get into meaningful employment. What is important is do they have a reliable form of transportation? That's important because without that, their ability to show up on time can really be hindered. And that's been one of the key reasons why we've had some fallout. If you're gonna be in the tower side, you've gotta be willing and able to travel two to four weeks at a time. And if you can't travel two to four weeks at a time, that's okay. Maybe we put you in a fiber uh, division or we put you in a wireless division where it's basically uh, all in week travel, which means you're never gone for any more than four days at a time. We identify things such as what is your weight? 240 pounds is the maximum for tower. But if it's not tower, that's okay, because you can always work on ground uh, if you're more than 240 pounds of weight. Uh, then, you know, are you afraid of heights? That determines whether it's tower, small cell, wireless, or fiber work. A big question for us is mechanical background. For us to know whether or not you have a kinetic feel, um, when you were a young man, did you like to take your, your bicycle apart and put it back together? Um, you know, if you were in the military, what did you do in the military? Just to understand whether or not they are kinetic learners with their hands, because those are the best candidates for our program. Um, and then last but not least, an important one, you know, can they work in the elements? You know, it, this is outside work. It's not in the cubicle. It's not indoors. So you've got to be able to work in the elements, heat, code, everything in between. So those are some of the basics. Some of the other things that we do ask is their ability to commit. This is a very boot camp driven type of program. So consider this. It is six days a week, Monday through Saturday. It is 12 hours a day, 0700 till 1900, 7 p.m. It's every single day and it mirrors the industry. So if someone cannot make that commitment into our program, their odds of being successful in this industry are very slim. 
The other part is attendance in the industry is very critical. One of the key reasons why people get let go from their jobs is their inability to show up on time or to be reliable enough to know that they can show up for work. So we have a very aggressive attendance policy. If they miss one day, odds are they're going to be removed. If they're tardy more than twice, they're going to be removed. The last piece is if their attitude is detrimental to the integrity of the program, and if that is the case, we will remove them. At the end of the day, we want to represent them, the industry, and their long-term success of this program. And that is the reason why we have such rigorous commitments there. Thank you. From all that rigor, here's the good news. At the end, there are 1,100 men and women that have graduated over the last two years. In that component, 91% of them have been placed into the industry. 84% of them have been retained at the one-year mark. And that is the key component of this program. We're changing lives through this program. We're changing the future. And we're making sure that we are successful as a net result to the community, to our partners, and to the industry. At the end of the day, that is the framework of what we're trying to do. And that is what we're hoping to do with you as you support your adult uh, community. We would love to be able to help them as they gain their GED, English as a second language. This is a perfect career path. They're not gonna be overlooked. They're not going to be treated as anything other than just an incredible asset. They may need to learn a little differently, kinetically through their hands. The power skills are critical because at the end of the day, if you do not know how to manage conflict, if you do not know how to critically think through a problem, it will not equal the net results that they want for self-sustainability. But this system has been able to really put something together that we can all be proud of. And you're not on your own. It's not like we're saying, go out there, pitch it, present it, and help them answer all their, their questions. Instead, it's the op polar opposite. Help us help you. Allow us to assign a success coach to you. Let us send you the video assets. Let us send you the, the flyers, the QR codes that allow them to watch the little videos like this that will connect the dots. And then to have a point of contact that they can communicate with to answer their questions. Because at the end of the day, all we wanna do is bridge the gap. And that is basically it. That's the, the presentation as a whole. Um, I believe now, uh, you know, Sharon, can we maybe open it up for some questions? Because I'm, I've seen a lot of great comments. Um, uh, and yes, the, there's a great thing about power skills. It isn't soft skills. It isn't. There's nothing soft about it. It is very powerful, and uh, it's a well-rounded program. Now, this is where we turn it over to you, um, and please ask questions. So, Cesar, just a couple questions I think I want to ask on behalf of the folks here. So let's say a local program is interested in partnering with you. What would be the next step? They, and, and just to be really clear, when Margaret talks about those um, learners have already received support so to in order the funding in order to go through this, is there like a are they contacting both of you, one of you? What's the process to get started? Sure. So um, I would love to um, to have our contact information that's in front of you. Please reach out to either one of us, Margaret or myself. That's our email address and our direct line. Um, because the very first thing that we would do the moment that you contact us is we would assign you um, a, a success coach. And the purpose of this success coach is to do an onboarding where you can have your team readily available. And our job is to coach you, to give you the assets, the videos, the flyers, and assign you a point of contact so that you can get those flyers and know the information that's on it, to see the videos. So if somebody wants to know well, what kind of jobs exist, well, we'll give you the video assets. We would love to be able to ship you some equipment from, if you have a TV readily available, it's giving you the assets so that you can display uh, more of a career exploration corner. There's got to be a little area somewhere at your facility where we can make it a, a telecom career exploration corner. Or maybe we give you access from a laptop. We ship you a laptop that you can connect to a TV where someone can do the gamification. 
to see what it's like or the videos. And, you know, I'm also willing to make a 30 hour class, a free 30 hour class, which is called Introduction to Telecom, that goes over everything from fiber to wireless to tower. So, what is the next step? Is engage with us, reach out to myself, reach out to Margaret. Then, what's going to occur um, is we would like to set up a time to talk to you about who do you support and how can we help you? Is it with the videos? Is it with the flyers? Is it with a um, you know career exploration corner? And how do we engage with your community so we can let them know that these great careers are there? Uh, and whether you're in West Virginia where Frontier is looking to bring in 172 people, or you're in Dallas, Texas, where we have Ericsson Corporation looking to bring in 64 people, or you're in Atlanta, it's irrelevant. The demand for this is nationwide. And these jobs are paying $20 an hour and up. So imagine in one month, your population could be in the middle class. Okay, so thank you for that. And then some other questions. What does the career path look like for a tower worker? So the career path is, uh, it is a five week program. Uh, the moment that we interview them and we go through the, do they qualify for the job? The moment that that occurs, we determine, we qualify them, and then we basically take them to student services. We get them their flights. We fly them into Tampa, Florida. We pick them up. And then basically for five weeks, they're doing six days a week, 12 hours a day. By week two, they begin interviews. By week three, they're doing formal assessments. Week four, they're getting all their certifications. Week five, they're graduating with a competency stack and their job offers are in hand. When we fly them back to their hometown, they're going back with jobs. And I'll add Sharon to that also. Um, I know this because I just submitted a grant for this. The telecom industry uh, really is does a good job of laying out those career paths for folks that go into tower or uh, fiber wireless, whatever it is. So there is an expectation. Um, and because of some of the industry requirements, there, there is a career path for them. So as they're on the job, as they're going through formal apprenticeship programs, they'll continue to earn credentials that will then qualify them for higher level positions, um, you know, higher level pay grades, anything from like a Tower Tech 1, Tower Tech 2. They can go on to become a site foreman or... Um, uh, project manager. And as you saw in one of those other slides, if it's somebody that wants to continue their formal education and perhaps go on to get um, an, a college degree, the because the way that the competencies are aligned to national standards, um, as well as to some of the programs here in Florida anyways, they can also articulate for college credit. So they're not starting at the at the very beginning. So also something that is really valuable is the fact that through an apprenticeship program, you can have a dual enrollment articulation. Uh, that is something that uh, our head of uh, Lassie, uh, Ruth, has been able to do over the last 20 years. She's really the expert in apprenticeships, and she's demonstrated the ability to support uh, dual enrollment all the way through adult education. Really, your population, in at least in our opinion, is a population that really can gain a lot from this because regardless of whether it's English as a second language, our employers have identified a way to onboard those individuals to give them uh, a really good service around them so that their mentor is someone of their primary language in order to ensure that they receive the type of mentorship that they need. But uh, yes, it all begins really with us hearing from you. And I will engage by also providing uh, a flyer, a simple one page flyer that will also have a lot of this information, maybe even a QR code so that you can actually explore our facility in our dorms because we have that readily available now. But um, um, I'm, I'm hoping that that would be something that you guys would be open minded to. So Cesar, a few more questions. What's the youngest age students can enter the program? 18. 
18 is the youngest. Great. Um, question, do you have recruiters or counselors that would actually attend a CTE career fair in California? So if you do not, that's just something to think about. Um, we do have a partnership with an organization, COIP does, called CCAE, the California Council for Adult Education, and they do um, a lot of work in the pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship space. So this, this could be a really good partner. So just wanted to mention that. Anthony, thank you for that comment. Thank you, Anthony. I, I would be very open-minded to it. We're currently working on a project uh, in a county in California that we're trying to serve. Uh, we do have a significant number of openings in California, so bridging that gap. Um, if you're telling me that there's a, an audience there, I would be very open-minded. Can you educate me if, uh, so those are, um, I'm assuming in-person presentations, is that right? Or are they virtual? So Cesar, that would likely be, an because it's a career fair, that would likely be where you'd have a booth and they could come by. Oh, and got it. Yes, we do do that. I just did one uh, in uh, uh, in Macon, Georgia uh, this week. And we did one last week in Dallas. We're gonna be doing one the first week if, of uh, December in Chicago, Illinois. So absolutely. If we are informed that um, that it's taking place, not that I understand what, what, the, what the question is, absolutely, we would be there. Cesar, there's a question here. Do students have to be U.S. citizens or residents to qualify? Ask me because there are numbers of folks that are undocumented in the adult ed programs. So right now, they have to be able to gain meaningful employment. So I could serve them and train them, but it's very difficult to get them employed if they're not documented. I'll give you an example. A lot of these employers have to meet the I-9 requirement. So if they are undocumented, uh, do they have any documentation at all that would allow them to have a meaningful W-2 employment? Um, because I know that for the employers, that's gonna be a big, a big part of the requirement. Great, okay. Um, there's a question here about potentially offering a pre-pre program for high schoolers. They're, this person is writing that they operate a CTE center and this would be a great program to add in. And that's just kind of for the future for you guys to think about, so. I, will, I, I got one better for you, Sharon. Whomever posted that, let's give them access to our free 30 hour introduction to telecom. Anybody that wants to make this available to anyone in the country, in our space, you're more than welcome to have it. It is a great, great program. It gives anybody, when they come out and they get their certificate and introduction to telecom, it actually shows them that they know all of the facets of wireless, fiber, and small cell. It'll give them a really good entry-level understanding that if they go through that, then they know that they're truly, truly someone that can benefit. And absolutely, I'll make that available. Um, send me an email directly. More importantly, reach out to Margaret Bowman. Margaret is really the conduit here. Margaret is uh, really the workforce involved is basically leading this charge. Great, and so there's another question. Is there any kind of age ceiling? No, but that, again, let's be very transparent. Between the ages of 20 and 40 is the sweet spot. Uh, for Tower, it's someone between the ages of 23 and 30. For Fiber, it's 18 up. Wireless, it's 18 and up. The cap seems to be about 40 for, for the Tower side. You, it's really very, um, it's very rigorous. It is very physically taxing. So I would tell you that, uh, no, I, I would not encourage someone north of 40 to go into the tower side. If they're 40 and above, I would say fiber is almost perfect. Why? Because they don't need to have, uh, they don't need to be physically fit of any way, shape or form. If they're able to work with their hands and they're able to work maybe in the most rigorous space in a bucket truck, that's wireless and that is fiber. Um, and that would be anyone in their 40s and up. Great, thank you. Um, we do have two questions. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer, but I'm just gonna put it out here. 
For those who don't graduate, what factors prevent them from doing so? My guess is they don't meet the requirements, but I um, wanted to give you the opportunity to answer that. And the, the same individual also asked for veterans and others who enrolled, do they typically come from some related work experience, such as like construction, telephone, tree trimming, that sort of thing? So two great questions. I'll address them both and I can answer them very quickly. Uh, the 81% that graduate, that's wonderful. It's the 19% that don't graduate. Historically, it's because either A, um, they cannot meet the rigor of the program. This is very rigorous, right? So either they had an attendance issue, they had a tardiness issue, maybe they had a fear of heights, maybe they realized that, okay, working in the elements, this is too aggressive, right? Um, and we've also had some that were not uh, in the tower side that were not physically able to continue because this is rather taxing. So that would be the men and women that don't graduate. It's historically because of that or because they had an attitude that was detrimental to the program. I do not keep bad apples. I remove the cancer immediately. The other part, it would be for the 81% that do graduate, there is 8.8% that never make it to work. And those are the 88 that do not pass their background check or drug test, or we're not forthcoming enough to educate us that those would be impediments so that we could have addressed them accordingly. So I hope that that answers question one. Uh, question two, Sharon, what was it? Is regarding, regarding the type of background that the veterans that do work for you come from, are they like typically tree trim trimmers or in construction or that sort of thing? Great question. Anything that has a mechanical background, I can tell you if someone in the military was in logistics and they sat behind the desk, they're going to have less than a 15% chance of actually making it. However, uh, if you're, you were in the Navy and you were hanging off the side of the ship, painting the side of the ship, those guys are going to do great. If you were a combat engineer, removing boulders so that the Humvee could get through so that they don't get blown up by an uh, IED, but you don't have a transferable skill when you come out of the military, you're going to do really, really well. So it's really, do you have a mechanical background? In other words, have you worked with your hands? Because um, if the answer is yes, then those men and women really do blossom. They shine. They do very well. Veterans have been incredibly successful because again, 0700 doesn't scare them. The 12 hours a day does not scare them. Working as a team, as a unit, following a standard operating procedure on, on the safety all the way to the assembly of a, of a boom or an antenna, it doesn't scare them. They do very, very well. Great, thank you. So I'm just looking to see if we have any more questions here. And this one is specifically regarding California. So. Are you in California right now, Cesar? Are you guys working there? Or is this? We, we have a partner there. So okay. we do have a partner in Corona, California, uh, which gives us access to three classrooms, two tower sites, and the ability to ship any fiber equipment, uh, wireless equipment, and we can do training in Corona. Um, we also are working um, to try to establish something to support men and women in Ventura County. Uh, but really, the entire state of California is very ripe. Um, simply because there is a significant amount of infrastructure that's going to be going in. From the uh, infrastructure bill that was signed by President Biden, out of that 60 billion, about 1 billion is expected to go to California, mainly because California does not have a tower framework. So what I mean by that is, imagine that climbing video does not exist in California. In California, a lot of the tower work has to be done in bucket trucks which means there's a limitation to the height uh, of those uh, towers. So what that means is a lot of the work that they would actually be doing in California is less tower and more wireless and more fiber driven. So there is a great deal of opportunity because it requires double the amount of infrastructure to support the same amount of people uh, in a wireless, uh, fixed wireless environment. And now we're getting questions. Are you in Connecticut and Albuquerque, New Mexico as well? We can support anyone uh, nationwide. It, it, right now we support every single region. We've uh, supported people in California. Uh, we've brought in people from Puerto Rico. 
We've brought people from uh, a lot, believe it or not, in New Mexico. New Mexico uh, is the next frontier, is uh, really taking off. There's a lot of opportunities for those that are near the Albuquerque area, simply because the wireless infrastructure that is required for that space, because I guess the mountain range requires for people between the Texas and New Mexico uh, um, borders to really have um, uh, really, really tall towers. So those are for the men and women that are not afraid that there are towers north of 800 feet for that region. Great, thank you. So as we're closing out here, I just, I put up a poll for folks to take. Um, I put your contact information in there, Cesar and Margaret. I just want to personally thank you. I know you did this on account of my request after I went out and met with you and saw the great work that you were doing with my own two eyes and I was so impressed. So thank you for making the time for that. I know um, apprentice, National Apprenticeship Week is really, really busy on your schedule and you took time for COAB and for our adult ed community. So we will be um, getting this information out as well, this video. We know that a lot of folks watch after session like they're teaching in class so it's harder to attend during session so i just want to thank everybody who's made the time any last words margaret and then cesar you can close us out uh just real quickly um you know we when cesar was talking about where we're at and where we can go that's because we have a lot of employer partners i think the missing um link for us and, and where you all come into play is that we are really looking for more partnerships with the education providers and for the adult ed community you've got that target audience so um you know it's interesting the fact that that you're asking are you in this state or are you in that state that tells me that we have a lot of awareness building to do. Um, so please reach out again, either to Cesar, to myself, a big part of what I do is to help I help identify resources um, within your state and within your communities to be able to full, to financially support these students so that they have absolutely no barrier to um, to this, this great opportunity. And thank you for having us. Wonderful. I want to go ahead and thank say, yeah, you know, Sharon, thank you. Sharon for putting this together, allowing us to communicate on Apprenticeship Week. I'm honored. Thank you, thank you. For those of you on the line, um, I have a personal challenge for you. And that is to uh, really think about how can we serve you and how can we help you serve your community. My challenge is to please reach out. Um, reach out, I, I, please don't forget about this presentation. Uh, please send an email. Give Margaret and really the Learning Alliance team the opportunity to collaborate. There is no one size fits all. There's not going to be some thing in a box that I'm going to send you that says, this is how we serve your community. We would rather take more of the personal touch uh, to basically give you the right resources. Um, maybe it needs to be um, with a resource from our team that is bilingual. Maybe it needs to be with a resource in our team that is uh, uh, supporting um youth, right, that are going through a GD program. Maybe it's um, us shipping you a, a computer and a TV so that you can have it running where uh, bi-weekly you have groups that get together for 30 minutes where we can present for you and help you. Um, we can provide that touch. Um, but my challenge to you is, will you please put together an email and uh, accept our offer to support your community? Uh, if you do, you will not regret. More importantly, we have a lot of great free assets we would love to get to you. And if we even we don't get a chance to work together, but I can give you the free program or some of these slides so that you can provide awareness to your team, please do so. Uh, and that's my only ask. Thank you for making the time. Thank you for sticking around and not leaving. Thank you for the great questions, the collaboration. Uh, and it is an honor to serve you and the people that you do serve. It's a thankless job. So if no one has said it lately, thank you for what you do. They're awesome. We love our adult educators. So thank you everybody for making time for this. Have a wonderful day. If we don't see before Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, thank you again, Margaret and Cesar. Happy National Adult uh, or National Apprenticeship Week. Thank Bye, you everyone. everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye now.